Welcome everyone and thanks for being with us for another partner webinar today. We will be discussing Data Center in a Box brought to you by Scale Computing. Before we get started, I'll go through some reminders. This webinar is being recorded. You receive an email in a couple of days with a link to view the webinar on demand. This webinar is interactive. You can submit a question at any time using the Q&A widget on your screen, and that's located right under the slides. If we don't get to your question, we will be able to follow up with you after today. There's also a live chat, so jump in and have a conversation with your fellow IT pros. If you prefer not to use the live chat, you can always turn it off with the orange icon buttons that are located at the bottom of your screen. Also, don't forget to check out the handout section. You can download some more uh, files there to get some more information. So let's get started. Our speaker today is Scott Mann, Director of North American Channel at Scale Computing. So with that, Scott, I'll hand it to you to get started. Thank you very much, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I'm going to be running through a couple slides here, but for those of you that haven't seen some of the great announcements that we've had out recently in the in the news, some of the fantastic press that we've had, um, I'll be kind of highlighting a little bit of those things that you, you might have read, or, or if you haven't, I'll, I'll be going over that a bit, and introducing the uh, micro data center in a box or data center in a box, depending on the size and the application of it. Um, the partnership, which is a technology partnership with APC by Schneider, uh, us, Scale Computing, and Ingram Micro and Promark Technology, which I'll get into all the key players later, but really what I want to get into is the why. Why all this makes sense. Micro, or data center in a box isn't a new term that we came up with. Um, everybody's used data center in a box for years, um, but really what, what it means to us and what the application is and what this can mean for you. So a quick, oh, oh did I do too many slides? Nope. A uh, quick agenda. Um, I'm going to do a background on scale. So uh, many of you are probably familiar with scale. Um, I'm not going to tie too deep into the technology of it. I really just want to talk to the foundation of scale, where we came from, uh, what got us to this point today that makes us uh, the ideal solution for what I call a true data center in a box. Uh, so not just being a bunch of hardware put together and shipped out. Um, and I'll get into the details of, of how that all came to fruition. And then introducing micro data center in a box. So going over the, the concept, the key players, um, some different deployment samples, uh, use cases, um, and then just why data center in a box, why it makes sense for you. Uh, and then finally, we'll finish off with some of the different configurations, um, pricing examples. And I have a, a few questions that I've preloaded just from some frequently asked questions that we've gotten since we launched it. Uh, so we'll go over FAQ and, and we can go over any questions that you have at the end as well. So feel free to type in any questions and we'll, we'll try to address those all at the end. So first, a history of scale. And I know the timeline thing is very cliched to, to start off with where we came from, but um, many of you that are familiar with scale, we launched in 2008 and we set out to create um, a solution that was a, a, a difference to the status quo of what virtual infrastructure means at that point in time to the small and mid market. And that's really what we were defined for was the small and mid market. So when we launched in 2012, you can see in 2010 there that we adopted KVM and that was a key component to um, changing the status quo and in, in relation to what it means to the SMB and the mid market. And then when we launched in 2012, we launched as an HD3 solution for, uh, we actually launched at VMworld, um, but we were launched as an alternative to VMware. Um, and since then you see that the adoption of KVM has really come, uh, taken a complete 180 and KVM was, you know, back in 2012, KVM was known as keyboard video and mouse. Uh, now KVM has been a lot more recognized. It's uh, one of the most widely used hypervisors globally, but it's it's a uh, it's um, it's not a it's not a private solution. It's you know an open source solution out there. So um, Google incorporated it into their engine. Uh, Apple switched from VMware to KVM. Uh, by 2016, we had over 1,500 customers in the small and mid market that were leveraging KVM as their um, part of their hyperconverged hyper -converged infrastructure solution. Um, and these, these dates are a little, uh, if, you, if you follow the press releases that we have, these dates look a little off with the, with the Lenovo press release that you see at the top there in 2017. Um, in, that was initially started in EMEA, and this is really the foundation of where the Lenovo partnership came from. Uh, and you may have seen some uh, recent news the last two weeks about the partnership with Lenovo. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that on the next slide. And then we launched our partnership with Google, which is our HG3 Cloud Unity. Basically, it's a hybrid cloud approach. And all of this led up to HG3 Edge, which is the foundation of our data center in a box solution. 
So we launched as a solution for the SMB mid-market. What H3 Edge was built for was, it is still that eight, that small and mid-market consumer, um, but it's also those larger distributed enterprises that have multiple small and medium-sized infrastructures that they, they need to centralize and manage. So the data center and box solution really is meant to be a fit for both sides of that. That true, that, that small SMB customer that might be 100 to 1,000 seats in there at, at, uh, as an organization, or that large multi-billion dollar organization that's got thousands of sites and it have the exact same needs as that SMB solution. So I'll go over different use cases and what that means to each of them and how this can be applied and everything. But really wanted to lay that foundation of how we kind of got to that, to the stage of launching HD3 Edge, which um, APC came to us and basically said, hey, we have to build a solution together, a data center in a box solution, because now this all makes sense. This is a true data center in a box that everybody's been talking about for years that we can actually, we can actually provide. Um, so who is Scale? So for those that aren't familiar with Scale, I like to call us the best kept secret in the industry uh, because we took a, a very different approach to the market because we were catering towards the small, the, the small medium-sized businesses. Uh, we couldn't do what all, many of the other um, organizations that cater towards those large Fortune 500 companies do, where it, which is build a brand and, and put a lot of money behind the brand and the PR to really build that that name first before the product comes after, we took the inverted approach to that. We built the product first because we knew we'd be cost conscious to the, the, the market that we were catering to. Uh, we knew that we, they, they, they're not, they don't have the million dollar budget for the infrastructure. So we needed to build something that was, that was exactly what we needed. It was hyper efficient. Um, it was easy to scale for them. It was simplified management. And we knew that the name would come after that. So as part of that DNA, as we were building this product, the way that we were able to grow um, was part of the, the main focus of that DNA is, is the, the support aspect of it. We built a product that was very easy for us to support, uh, which made it very easy for our customers to support, which made that end user uh, customer satisfaction next level, um, the best customer satisfaction that probably you've definitely seen in the hyperconversion industry and probably any technology that you've had out there. And that's helped us evolve over the years. That's taken us to thousands of customers tens of thousands of systems. It pulled us upstream into this distributed enterprise space that we didn't really expect to go into. And it brought along a lot of technology partners that you see there in the bottom right. Um, with, with Intel, um, the APC partnership, obviously, that we're talking about here today, the Google partnership for the hybrid cloud, being able to leverage Google for uh, DR as a service and uh, leveraging that as kind of a component of an extension of your primary infrastructure, I should say. Um, and then Lenovo, which was the press release uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, which will be incorporated into this data center in a box solution as well, which provides us with a global, uh, a, basically a global distribution base for us. So now we can sell, now we can service customers that are not just in North America, not just in the markets like uh, EMEA and APAC that we serve to, but in those smaller areas that you might have an office um, across the across the globe that you need to send hardware for and make sure there's local hardware available. That's something that with Lenovo we can provide. And based on that, that DNA, that support being the biggest biggest part of that solution, that, that, that foundation of building a rock solid product and, and having support being a key component within that, not just a nice to have, it's a feature within the product, that's led us to becoming the most reviewed and highest rated HCI solution, so hyper-converged infrastructure solution in the market. And when you consider who we're really competing against, that, that, speaks, that speaks tenfold on, on, the, uh, on what we, that formula that actually worked in the market that we were serving towards. You guys can just check out Spiceworks. Uh, we've got a five-star rating there. There's other peer-reviewed platforms like Tech Validate and Trust Radius. We have tons of reviews on there, tons of different case studies, customers in all different sizes of the market, as well as Gartner uh, peer, uh, peer reviews, which is really more of a, an enterprise focused platform, but um, you can see that that's kind of how we got pulled up into that space as well. Now, what the what of what is hyperconvergence? What were we trying to design with this this solution that's changing the status quo of the virtual infrastructure? Um, hyperconvergence to us is very different from what it means to many of the other players in the industry. Hyperconvergence is server storage and virtualization into one single platform. So it's one single solution architecture that combines all of those different components, not different software layers that are stacked on top of each other. And this is a foundational difference. This, just this definition of what we tried to do, what we, were out, what we set out to create, it's the foundational difference of what makes us unique for these markets that we serve into and what makes us the perfect fit for a true data center in a box. What does that really mean under the hood of it all? 
Um, so the architectural efficiency, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of, of the different uh, of the data paths of, uh, of the left side versus the right side. But what I'll say is the left side, it's, it's called a VSA. So that's the other approach to hyperconvergence. Uh, on the right side, that's the HC3 approach. So HC3 being our, our solution um, and hyper, Hypercore being our operating system under the hood. Uh, this is what it all incorporates. So the main difference is the markets that these, these products are trying to serve. On the left side there, that's the mar that's that. The, the um, VSA approach is basically taking the physical controllers and virtualizing them. So there's still a lot of uh, compute resource, uh, compute, compute re utilization, excuse me, compute utilization that is happening um, within a three node system like you'd have there. Um, and not that there's any wrong, any, any wrong with the left or the right side approach, but the left approach is very much targeted towards a log, large organization where those that OS consumption of 96 to 300 gigs of RAM and 12 cores in a, a single three node system, uh, that becomes negligible with the size of infrastructures that they have. In the markets that we're serving towards, we knew we needed to be hyper efficient at the foundation of where, how we designed it all. So we created a, an OS and a, and a foundation of the architecture that is a lot more efficient. It's 60% more efficient than the traditional infrastructure, and it's up to four times more efficient than the, uh, the other hyper converged approach, I guess you could say. And that's what makes us a great fit in that SMB market all the way up to that uh, distributed enterprise market where you could be running on a terabyte of storage, you could be running on a petabyte of storage, everything in between there. But if you need something that's efficient, that you properly utilize the resources and as a smaller data path to make it more, more productive, um, that's exactly what we set up to design. So what did we design? We, we created a solution that was simple, scalable, available, and affordable. So what that means at the base of all that, from a simplicity aspect, we wanted something that was Built for this market, uh, typically you're juggling a lot of different things at once. So you need something that you get it at your doorstep. It's easy to rack, stack, put up, deploy, and it's easy to manage on the day to day. You don't want to spend an hour every morning going through a checklist of did I do this, did I do this, did I do. You want it to just run so you can focus on all those other tasks that are uh, that are more pressing tasks, that are security risks, that are revenue generating, um, that the that business really cares about. And then from a scalability perspective, you don't always have uh, a, a the budget to be able to get the size of infrastructure that you need, or you don't always have the the, the know with all to know where where everything's moving within the technology industry. And all of a sudden, you could get a, a ton of different data that's thrown on you that you weren't expecting to have to incorporate into your pri your primary infrastructure. With a solution like ours, we can start from you can start from that single node, or you can start from a three node system that's fully redundant. You can add whatever we have out at that time, mix and match all the different families of nodes that we have across the board, whether it be a hybrid node with uh, flash and spinning drives, or it be an all flash node, you can mix and match to make a, the infrastructure that works for you at that time and scale it out as it's needed so that you're getting that proper return on your investment and you're not having to buy a bunch of storage up front that is never going to be used or buy a bunch of RAM or compute resources that is just sitting idle. And then from an availability perspective, uh, we started off as server storage and virtualization. That single node, we built in uh, the the, the, the internal snapshotting functionality that's VSS integrated. So you can have snapshots of down to your exchange, your SQL databases, whatever it is, so that you can recover single files if you need to recover a file. But more importantly, we built in the replication. And we built in replication that is, uh, it can be sent off site to that single node. So that now you have not only local availability between the three node system where if you had a drive fail, if you had a node fail, everything would still be able to get up and running on the existing on the remaining infrastructure. But what if you had a site outage? You can get everything run up and running on a single node off site or in the Google Cloud if you wanted to leverage that platform for a DR as a service with our with our H3 Cloud Unity, you get everything running off site. So now it's now we're talking server storage, virtualization, backup, and disaster recovery. Um, and then from a 40 portability perspective, especially if you're bringing in all five of those components that I just mentioned, you're really you're really driving down the total cost of, of all those different solutions that you need to have. And just the labor cost of taking the time to recover something off site. With us, it's all baked into our software. So if you need to recover off site, it's seamless. More importantly, it's seamless to fail back. Failover is always the easy part. The fail back is always the difficult part. With us, it's very seamless. A few blocks change, we send over those new blocks, you get it up and running online. Um, you don't have to wait a few days to get everything back up and running. And then just the total cost of the solution, we're eliminating those licensing costs. So by bundling everything together, we're creating a, a hyper-efficient infrastructure where you can use less resources than you would typically need to use, or even and substantially less resources than our competitors would need to use. 
Um, and then we're also just offering a solution that hasn't been um, marketed and branded and all this PR that you're paying for. Uh, you, we're building a solution that was fit for that market, so we knew we had to be cost effective and affordable. Now, introducing the uh, the micro data center in a box concept. So the partnership, as I mentioned at the start, it's, it's scale computing, uh, APC, and Ingram Micro, um, joining forces to create a turnkey hyperconverged solution. So it's a micro data center in a box. It's all of the different components from um, not just your server storage, virtualization, backup, disaster recovery, but now it's all of the peripheral components as well. You need the rack, you need the UPS, you need the PDUs, uh, anything that you need from what APC can provide, we can bundle that in together. Your networking, your cabling and everything on the back end, and that's all assembled at Ingram Micro or Promark, which is a business unit within Ingram Micro. Um, and then when it gets to your doorstep, it's fully rack stacked, ready to go, ready to be plugged in. And if you wanted it to, have all the services and everything to get everything. You don't have to touch it. We can get it up and running for you and everything migrated over for you. So who does what in this? Um, APC obviously provides those racks, the UPS, a KVM switch to cabling. Um, Scale provides the, our hyperconverged appliance, um, which is any, from between APC and Scale, you're not limited to, you, these are the bundles that you need. It's, it's a technology partnership and we bundle it all at, just basically we bundle it at the, at the product line level. Um, so that you don't have a limitation of we want a custom build and we want, instead of a 24U rack, we want a 48 or we want the little 13 inch rack. We can mix and match whatever is needed within it. Any of the scale families, we can mix and match whether it's, we have our HD 1000, 2000, 4000, 5000 and all the different variations within there. We can add whatever is needed. It doesn't need to be a three node. It can be a one node. It can be a six node. Um, and then Pro, uh, Promark and Ingram will configure it all together and ship it out to the, if it's a single location or if it's multiple locations, we'll provide all those shipping, get everything on site for you um, where it's delivered right to your doorstep. And we can take it to the next step on the optional side there. The networking, obviously we, we have our, uh, our OEM switches that we can incorporate into the networking aspect that have them all rack it stack it, or we, we call it a, a bring your own switches. If you add any switches that are, compatible with our networking guidelines, which is, especially on the 10 gig side, very, uh, very easy to accommodate. Um, we can incorporate all those together. And with the white glove shipping, if we want it put right into the data center, we can put it right into the data center and plug it in. And if you want somebody to actually power it on and migrate over existing workloads, we can have local resources globally that'll go and do those for you. And especially in those remote locations where, you know, it's gonna cost you a lot to get out there, There's a lot of downtime associated with that. That's where having those resources is a great fit for you. And this is what I like to call my marketing slide. So really, what is microdata, micro data center in a box? The benefits of it, it's, it's a simple solution. It's a modern solution leveraging hyperconverged technology at a lot of these edge environments where hyperconverged technology would traditionally not make sense from a cost perspective or from a management perspective, be too difficult to manage. And it's a reliable solution where a lot of the times you have um, a solution on-prem at the edge that maybe isn't the most reliable. It's just fit the budget at the time. Um, and we can now that we've brought down those costs, we've kind of gone past those cost parities where it makes sense now to get virtual infrastructure, get a, a full hyperconverged environment that is more redundant than what you've been, what you've typically been used to. And it's scalable, of course, uh, whether it's at the edge or whether it's back in the data center where everything's replicated back to, it can all be scaled out from that single node and up. And it's a complete solution when you get it. It's that full data center in a box, gets to your doorstep, you plug it in. Um, so it's really, built for every organization, every budget within these markets that we cater to. It doesn't mean that you need to be a one-person IT shop. Uh, it doesn't mean you need to be uh, a multi-billion dollar organization. It's these things are, are different pain points that you that would address uh, some of the different pain points that you, if these address some of the pain points that you have, then this could be the perfect solution for you. So some of the different deployment scenarios, like I mentioned before, it's really anything across the board. So um, I tried to make it not too complicated on this slide here, but if you had a central data center, um, you can have location one that's just a single node. Um, this single node could be running, um, you know, just a couple workloads, a couple of VMs, maybe a domain controller, mail, um, print server, some simple services, uh, maybe some sort of a SQL database or something like that that's running that, that one site. And you have your three, your two other locations, location two and location three, they require the redundancy. They need more than that single node. They want that local redundancy. We can have that all centrally managed from one, that one data center that you'd have. Um, or if you have that offsite need for disaster recovery, you can put that single node offsite 
And now you have that disaster recovery and that backup plan uh, put in place that is seamless to fail over to and fail back in the event of some sort of disaster or a failover need or just testing failover. Or you can have everything centrally managed as a DR point. So basically providing your own DR as a service, your own private cloud for DR, where everything is replicating back to it. They could be replicating back on individual nodes. They could be replicating back on one big cluster. Every, all, all the options are still there that we can provide. Or of course, at the bottom, partner cloud, uh, our, our cloud Unity solution with Google. If you wanna use Google as a DR as a service, it's also a very great option. It provides you with the power that Google provides um, rather than, uh, it's more than just a single node, even though it looks from an administrative perspective like you're managing a single node, you've got the power of Google's data center underneath that. Um, and of, of course, you have the redundancy of Google's multiple uh, multiple sites uh, that you can fail over to. So there's different advantages to whichever solution. Everybody has a different need. We're just trying to be able to fill in the gaps of what, what those different needs and cater towards all the different types of solutions. And then on the far right side there, if you have at the edge different sites that need to be small locations, uh, you can get a smaller rack with those micro data center in a box, multiple locations from tens to hundreds to thousands, um, and they can all be centrally managed from that, that one data center. Now I'll actually get into the use cases here, um, talk a little bit more about them. So in the SMB in the mid market, what we typically see is we've got uh, the jack of all trades. We're, we're, trying to juggle a thousand different things at once. We've got all these different projects that are on our plate and we never seem to be able to get done each of, each of the uh, projects. So if we can take any of those pieces off your hand by putting everything together into a single into a single box that's shipped to your doorstep, that'll save you the time of the racking and stacking, just the tedious portion of it. And if it takes it to the next step where you actually want it to be powered up, booted, and you want it, you want it just to run, and then you can work on those other, those other projects that are building up, we can help you with that as well. Um, to get it up and running to the point where you're ready to go, you're ready to log into the console, or you're ready to log in specifically to the application that we migrated over, for instance. Uh, we can do everything in between there. Um, and then on the other side of it, you've got those remote and branch offices. Uh, I'll let you guys read the, the examples there if you guys want to see it. Because these are some of the ones on the, um, the trust radius and tech validates that we pulled out. Uh, this is a, the, a, an extreme example of a remote branch office. Uh, but if you have a remote branch office, it could just be a remote location. It's expensive to fly into, um, or it's just it's very far, and the downtime to get there is going to be that's an opportunity cost for you because the downtime that you're going there or your techs are going there is time that you'd be working on other projects rather than just racking and stacking the infrastructure. We can get that all up and running for you, and you can manage that all remotely and then basically have that up and running on the remote side. And the last one is the edge computing use case. So those that aren't familiar with edge computing yet, you're gonna start hearing about it as much as you hear about hyperconvergence now. Um, edge computing is, is kinda, it's, the way that I describe it is you've got your traditional virtual infrastructure and the edge is those folks, and, and then you've also got the cloud as well. The edge is the folks that kind of sit in between there. Uh, they might not have the bandwidth, they might not have uh, the cost requirements for, uh, or the, the, the cost capabilities for a cloud deployment. And then on the other side of it, a traditional virtual infrastructure, it's too expensive, it's too much to manage, they don't need that. Well, the edge of the ones that sit right in between there that, that kind of want, they want the, the benefits that both provide, but they want it at a price point that's a lot lower because they're typically a smaller environment. That's where we come into play because we can offer that solution at a smaller footprint where you can see that we could run on a few gigs of RAM and a fraction of a core uh, we can run on these smallest of data centers. We can run down to the size of basically a Nook. If you're familiar with Intel's Nooks, we could run our infrastructure on uh, that size because our software can run on that. Um, so in this in this use case here, um, this is one of our larger deployments where it's a retail space and they have, when it's, when it's all said and done, it'll be thousands of sites, um, currently hundreds of sites. Um, and it's, they, they're creating a store as a service. So they want to be able to go to a store, the store gets, infrastructure is getting old, they want to refresh it, we can just drop it in there for them. They can get all the services, get it up and running and, and be able to essentially manage all of that. But they basically they create a, a, a store in a box, which is exactly what we've designed for them. And now they want to be able to essentially manage all of those. So if they have thousands of different sites, they want one single console, one single pane of glass. So that's what we designed on the HG3 Edge side. We designed a single pane of glass to be able to manage those 50, 100, thousands of sites uh, without having to tediously go through each one of the IP addresses of, of, of any of the different data centers there. You can manage it from one site, easy to have it up and running on one of your monitors and everything is happy and you see if there's any notifications that pop up and you can, it's a one click to get into that actual cluster. So 
still the why. Why does this work? If any of these, if any of these pain points of, of resources, remote locations, or just the benefits of cost of bundling all the solutions together make sense, then it's probably worth having a follow-up discussion about it, even just to compare it to what you'd be doing today. On the resources side, um, we're typically over leveraged, like I mentioned, or we just don't have any resources at the edge. There's nobody on site. There's no local resources. Um, or you, we're in a tight time frame, and we want to have everything once it gets out there ready to go, so we can just get we can just get right into the weeds, and we can get those infrastructure, those VMs migrated over, those applications spun up, whatever needs to happen. Any of those scenarios sound like they they resonate with you, perfect fit for the data center in a box solution. The remote locations where travel costs are high, you're losing productivity by having people sending out there, perfect fit for us. And all of these kind of segue into the cost benefit of it all. Utilize our resources as the, we can basically fill in the holes of, of what, what you might need, what you might require. Um, if, if resources are, are, are an issue for you right now, we can go and help you from start to finish on just getting the hardware put together to doing the actual installation. Um, and and a, simp a simple deployment means we can do the heavy lifting and you can utilize your resources for those projects that are revenue generating or might be some sort of a security risk like I mentioned before. And at the end of the day, really we're bringing this all together is by bundling all of these solutions, all the key players within the uh, within this solution, scale, APC, maybe Lenovo later on, Ingram Micro, we're bundling all together to make it a more cost-effective solution for you. So you can't go and pick apart each one of these solutions, each one of the components within it and get a better price. You get them all together, you're going to get a better price from the bundled solution provided. What does that configuration look like? That's the question. Uh, so configurations and pricing, I, I call this the base configuration, but like I said before, everything can change. Um, this is just the base configuration from what we've had from our, our some of our initial deployments. This is the most common configuration. Um, any of our HD3 nodes that you'll see under server storage virtualization there, that's just your standard three node, uh, 64 gigs of RAM in each one. It's a hybrid system with three spinning drives, one SSD, um, and everything integrated, of course, with our, op our hypercore operating system. Starting out at the one gig uh, networking side of it and coming with that first year of support. And on the on the APC side, you start with that 24 unit shelter, uh, all the cabling and accessories and everything that are required. Uh, your a 3000 VA network uh, network card included, a UPS um, and everything rack and stacked there. So the, the actual base configuration would be a full rack and stack of that infrastructure with your standard shipping basically to your door that you typically get, like if you got our any of our any of our nodes. Um, and of course the cabling, if you had if you had the networking built into there as well, if you had different switches, we'd have the cabling and everything provided. Everything is uh, properly structured so that when it ships, nothing happens when during the shipping of it. It's fantastic. They do a great job of it. We tested it out on many of the deployments already, and it gets at your doorstep ready to go. Now, what else can you add to that? What are the different variations of it? It's really whatever we can do as a two solution providers or three solution providers, I guess. Um, if you want a single node you want less you want less nodes you want more nodes you the options are endless within any of our different nodes that we have you can get faster procs more procs more ram higher capacity spinning drives higher capacity ssds uh, get rid of the hds and go all flash uh, one gig 10 gig any of the new procs that we have coming out this quarter as well um, extend that support maintenance from one year to three years or five years depending on what your refresh cycles are or what, what aligns with your budget um, and on the rack side with apc you have a smaller site that needs that 13U that you can just kind of wall mount. We can put, we can leverage the 13U. If you don't even have a data center at the site and you want one of, I, I like to call it a piece of furniture, uh, the 18U racks that's you know completely noise canceling. Uh, you can literally have that beside your desk with a full infrastructure running in it. You wouldn't even know that you have a full data center sitting beside your desk. Um, or if you want to do a full rack, a 48U, et cetera, anything that APC has. If you want to do a dual UPS. Um, higher voltage, whatever the different functionalities are that you're looking for, you can have that all bundled in, excuse me, bundled in together with the, with the baked in discount and everything applied to it. Um, and then if you wanted to add the backlink switches as well, we can, we can use that as part of our OEM, or if you have a certain provider that you prefer, we can incorporate that into the configuration. Uh, we can do the local tech services globally and the white glove delivery. The white glove delivery is basically delivered right into your office unwrapped waste removed um, so this could be you know in some scenarios we hear of they don't have we have to take it up a flight of stairs um, we can do that we can have make sure that we have multiple people to be able to lift the data center up to the flight uh, up to whichever uh, level that it needs to go up to 
get it into an elevator, get it up to that next uh, that next level, whatever is required from that perspective. That's a lot of information to take in at once. Um, I'm sure there's going to be many questions or, or, or different uh, different pieces that I might have missed. Um, but from a micro data center in a box FAQ side of it, uh, next steps almost uh, who to engage, request pricing, sizing, et cetera. Uh, your local scale rep, we can we can guide it all through. We do have an alias set up, and that's that's hyperlinked. So if you click that. A data center in a box alias uh, uh, email right there. You'll actually be able to send an email to it, um, and we can get you all set up. Now, the scale in the APC technical teams, they're, they're synced. So if I'm the, definitely no expert on the power side of it, I'm very much an expert on the scale side, so I'm going to defer to the APC, the APC team to help us build the configuration together and vice versa. So we're, we're well synced that we're going to build that one configuration to make sure that the process is seamless for you, but you've got it validated by not just scale, but by APC as well, so we can get you up and running, meet the requirements of whatever it is in terms of uptime that you're trying to achieve. And then who sends pricing? What does it really look like? We bundle it all at Ingram. So when you get a quote, it's a single quote. It's not a thousand different part uh, line items or anything like that. They're hard, impossible to decipher. You get a single line item, and we can give you that reference architecture what the build actually consists of. Um, and additional shipping time, it's, it's very seamless for us to do the, the rack and stack and put it all together. You had thousands of sites, that might be a different story. Uh, we'd have to put a, cu a custom shipping time together for that. But it, out, out of the gate, if you just needed something shipped to the doorstep and you want it all configured, it's only going to add a couple of days, a few days to the, we've seen, we've seen a couple of days to a few days over the standard shipping time. And what's available for you, we have a couple different collateral that, um, I think we actually have a white paper on there as well. If you on the side that uh, um, they've added in, you can download those just from this site. Um, we also have so it's a one pager solutions brief, uh, just a regular flyer and a reference architecture. And then of course we have all the resources and everything that we use from a technical and sales perspective: our sizing tool, our assessment tool, our TCO tool, and everything that APC leverages as well. It's all within the realm of possibilities for what you can use this for. And that's it for the, the presentation. My contact information is right there. Um, if you want to send me an email, sman with two n, scalecomputing.com. Again, there are general inquiries, or if you just want to find out a little bit more about the data center in a box, or you want to see a more technical deep dive into it, we can definitely get that set up. Data center in a box at scalecomputing.com. My email is a little shorter, so feel free to email that if it's easier. And with that said, um, we'll see if there's any questions in here. And we yeah, Scott, as you're looking those over, I just want to remind everyone uh, that Q&A widget's right underneath the slides. You can drop your question in there and submit it over to us, and we'll get to as many as we can. Also, a reminder that if you uh, get a chance to take a look, as Scott mentioned, at that handout section before we finish. Um, so, uh, so again, let's uh, get those questions in. And, Scott, if you think... Uh, you have one there. Yeah, there's a couple on here that I can that I can quickly answer. Um, the, the the first one, uh, Ryan, you had two two great questions. One, are we ever going to support the the VMware hypervisor? Um, I, I the, the whole foundation of really what we were trying to change with scale is is to change that status quo and have uh, everything integrated into one single component. Um, so I don't think that we would ever actually incorporate the VMware hypervisor into it. Um, personally, it's, it's we're trying to build this one single cohesive system and by adding VMware on top of that, it becomes a software layer that isn't integrated with the storage layer. And that's kind of the purpose of what we were building is that our, our hypervisor layer, it's directly integrated with our storage layer. Our storage layer is called Scribe, stands for Scale Computing, Reliable Independent Block Engine. It's a long one. Um, but within our hypercore operating system, both of those both of those softwares live within it. Um, You've got the, hype, the the KVM hypervisor, which can speak directly to the storage layer. So when it comes to things like snapshots and everything, we can be super efficient because we're eliminating that third party on top of it. And the foundation of trying to build a support system that is a, a product that's super easy to support, by us being in control of all of that makes it easier for us to support. We're not reliant on VMware to come up with a new firmware update or any changes or having to test VMware's updates after they come up. When you When you need to update with us, We've tested everything on the back end. Will you click a single button? Will you walk away? And it upgrades everything from uh, from the hypervisor level down to the firmware. A, a single button click, walk away, nothing goes down, and everything is upgraded by the end of it. And then there's another great question with um, what is the typical client dedupe rate? Um, I like to say that the, 
The typical client dedupe rate is usually a marketing term. Um, we, we probably have some in standards of, of where, we, where we fit in, in in certain environments, but it's really going to depend on what your environment is. Um, re it's really going to depend on, you know, what kind of workloads that you're running within that environment to, tell you, to give you an accurate dedupe rate. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're, I, I, what's the scale compared to, how does scale compare to HPE SimpliVity? That's actually what I was going to get into next. So that's a great question. Um, with the dedupe, I know some of, the, uh, some of the other players out there will talk about how great their deduplication is and everything. The way I say it is we're built to be a lot more cost effective. Um, if, if they have a dedupe rate that sounds impressive, we'll put more storage behind it and we'll still be more cost effective. So we'll be able to get you more storage capacity at the end of the day, whether it's deduped or, or deduped to 3x or 2x. Uh, we'll, you'll have more actual usable, usable capacity with us. Um, and with HPE SimpliVity, uh, our biggest comparison is HPE is a, a VSA. Um, they have some other features in there as well with the PCIe card. But um, at the end of the day, HPE, is the, this HPE as a company is really more enterprise focused, and SimpliVity is much more an enterprise solution. Um, Cost-wise, we're definitely going to compare to them uh, a lot, substantially less. But it's also from an efficiency perspective, um, efficiency of the data, uh, the data path efficiency of the resources that you're using, and it's really built for a different market. If you have 10, 15, 20 people in your IT department, SimpliVity is a great solution for you because it has all the complexity and everything that is required for a team that has three guys managing the network, two guys on security, uh, two guys on the virtual layer um, that need all of those granular layers. We're built to be a solution that you typically under 10 people in the IT department where it's a few people managing the, the tier three infrastructure. And you need something that just works because it's not, you don't want to just have to go in there and log into the console every day. That's the solution that we are built for. And if that defines the, if that defines what you are looking for, then I would say that's the biggest comparison of us with SimpliVity is who the markets are, are, are ideal for. Both great products, both serve different markets. Uh, does a micro data center in a box run comfortably at climates that exceed 115 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit? And do you recommend a water cooling? Fantastic question, and I'm going to have to defer to a technical uh, resource on that one. Um, we definitely, I mean, getting APC involved in it as well, if, if using those, so they have racks that are built for some of these extreme uh, conditions, and I personally don't know the standards of what we can run within our servers. Um, so I, it's a great question, but I'm just going to say, Felix, if you want to send me an email, Sman at scalecomputing.com. I will get you the appropriate person to be able to answer that question without giving you some, some marketing fluff from my end. What happens if you can't access the web GUI on the nodes in the event of a disaster? Is there a guide that shows how to shut down VM basically via the command line? Uh, yeah, you can also, um, we, we can have support can log in from the back end. Um, we also do have scripts and everything that you can run. if. You wouldn't have to manually shut them all down if you wanted to, your, your UPS is about to fail, that they will automatically shut them all down gracefully for you. So that's something we'd, we'd probably do proactively as well, making sure that you have, you know, your APC UPS running or, um, and when, when that does, everything does need to shut down, we can shut, gracefully shut down all the VMs that are running on there um, so that if you, for some reason, couldn't access the UI, everything would gracefully shut down for you. Some great questions. Thank you very much for all those. If there's anything else, I'll wait on a couple here, a couple more minutes. Um, outside of that, we can save you guys a couple. We can save you guys 20 more minutes of your day. All right. Yes. If you get a question in, we can try to follow up after today. Uh, but I do want to extend our thanks to you, Scott, for your presentation today, and of course, special thanks to Scale Computing for sponsoring today's webinar.